Hi there, and welcome back to this tutorial series on using the early notation typesetter. Now in the previous video, I typeset this really short little example piece um, just to give you an idea of some of the basic entry in the program. There are a few issues here. So generally, we want to make sure that our music that we've typeset sort of lines up with the original, especially if we need to fit text in there. Um, in the future, Ant will allow you to insert uh, lyrics, and we're working to figure out some kind of way to have it um, automatically space things out based on lyrics so that it doesn't get too cramped or anything, but that's down the road. Um, at the moment, we primarily, in this circumstance, rely on what are called manual spacers. Now, I showed you one form of these manual spacers by putting a bunch at the end here to um, pad out this line so it wouldn't get too spaced out. But you can, um, in edit mode, click around, right? Go to any point. And if you want, let's say right here, right, we have this spacer here and it's not shown here. So instead, I can come in here and I can hit, let's see, I or maybe O. A slightly longer one. We'll put that in. And you'll notice he uses that longer spacer style on the other side too if you want to be slightly pedantic. Now check this out. Here I have three, God, four little spacers. And when I press um, O instead and click, those four little spacers have disappeared. When you insert a manual spacer, it overwrites whatever is in there. You can actually use this to tighten up passages if you need to. For example, if it generates uh, three spacers somewhere and you only want two, you can manually put two spacers in there. You'll notice here that he actually spaces out his rests in this case. Um, we spent a lot of time studying and analyzing uh, how people use spacers, and unfortunately, it's pretty inconsistent. Um, these, the automatic spacing here is uh, generally correct, but not always. Uh, it's based on our study of a number of different original texts, trying to figure out, you know, what what did they do here and there. You'll notice, for example, here is using these longer spacers, then smaller spacers. Um, it's sort of inconsistent in this regard. Maybe he had a reason to, we don't know. Uh, but I can go in here and if I want to be incredibly pedantic, uh, I can even make sure our spacer lengths properly match um, the original there. So that's looking pretty good in that line. Let's take a look at the next. Right here at the beginning, he's using one of these uh, longer spacers. Again, the, these are just sort of, you know, finishing things. And this isn't even something that you even need to do. This is, I'm just trying to make it look pretty. There, we'll replace that. And then one for down there. Let's see. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Oh, clean that up. And maybe he has a teeny tiny spacer. I, I generally like to put a little spacer there. Just looks a little nicer. So there, I've sort of spaced this out a bit. It's looking better. Let's check our print preview. Hit W. There we go. Now, if you're not a fan of all this kind of white space between it, it is kind of distracting. Let's go into File here. We'll lower this minimum unit spacing. And you'll notice things kind of wiggle around a little, but that white space is disappearing. I tend to like it sort of around 0.2 here. You can also type directly into these boxes. That's looking better. Now you also may not like this sort of rounded form here. We can go in and make these square. See now they're very lined up. And in fact, if we lower this to zero, 
um, it will be con basically continuous lines. Um, and this is excellent for um, cases of uh, multi-process typesetting, um, so early Petrucci sort of thing um, as well. But let's go back. We'll put a little bit of spacing in here. I'll show you some other uh, spacing kinds. We have these rough rounded ones which are sort of wiggly. Let's zoom in further. Yeah, you can see kind of wiggle a bit. Um, and then we have these uh, rough square ones which sort of have a, a angle to them. And actually these sort of look to be a bit more spaced out. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And these actually sort of randomly fluctuate a little. So all these are essentially procedurally generated. Um, we have a, a whole bunch of uh, alternate op versions created, and it sort of uh, generates them as needed. Um, later on, we'll probably be adding an option to adjust the uh, thickness of these. As you can see, this original, these are very thick. Um, but in some originals, they're not terribly thick. So I'll zoom out here a bit. I'm using a mouse so I can do control and scroll wheel like you would with uh, zooming in on a page. Now, if you're noticing that things aren't quite uh, lining up terribly well in your particular example, you can use these margins. So for example, if you punch in Point one on each side that'll sort of tighten things up more. Just note if you go a little crazy on the manual spacing and then you start playing with uh, margins or the staff scaling um, or any of these uh, the minimum unit spacing it will be adjusting the automatic spacers while you're doing that. So generally I recommend you get once you're done typesetting Go over here, adjust your staff scaling, adjust your staff spacing, adjust the minimum unit spacing. Make sure you're on the right page um, size for your country or region. Um, you can get some pretty large paper. Uh, before you go ahead and go crazy with manual spacing. Um, so one other thing that some people like to do with the manual spacing is group notes. This isn't a great example of this. It's normally something you would do with, let's say, fusas or semi-fusas. Um, but let's say I want to group these notes together. So I can put a, um, a larger space in here and a larger space on here. And now when we go to print preview, these are all kind of a little bit closer together. There's not as much uh, space between them compared to this grouping and this grouping. Whoop, I killed a note. Thank goodness for undo. <laughs> Control Z, or you can access it over here under Actions. So let's actually, uh, this could be spaced out a bit more in height. So let's go and File. Can increase our staff spacing there. There, so now we have plenty of room if we want to come in and add text later. And of course, if you're working with metric, uh, you can switch over to centimeters and everything will change. I'd say that's pretty good. When we're done with our piece, we can of course, be sure to save it. Um, it will save as a .ent file, which can be loaded back into ENT later, um, or shared with others who can load it in their copy of ENT, provided they have the correct uh, fonts. Um, or you can export a PDF here. I can export this. Now this is um, running through the print server. Export it. I can save it. I can open it back, and there it is. So you can see these vector characters we're using are um, basically theoretically infinite resolution. I mean, I can zoom all the way in here, and you're not you're never going to see a pixel. <laughs> but this is great. It's ready to print. 
um, and it's something that uh, you can of course share with other people um, or load on a digital device for reading um, and enjoying. So that's it for this episode. Um, in the next episode, we'll be going over some more advanced uh, notation tricks and tips, um, as well as there'll be an episode on ligatures and some other information like that. So I hope you enjoy this series so far, and I hope you enjoy the early notation typesetter. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.